Hello, welcome to The Wandering Drew. I am Drew. A few weeks ago, I presented an episode that discussed food for the trail. And in that episode, I covered various choices and things to consider when doing meal planning and preparation for different types of activities. I'd like to continue with that today. Also, a few people reached out to me and asked me to explain things in greater detail. And it took me back and it reminded me that when you're starting out, a lot of times you don't know all the acronyms and the terms that people use. So I'm gonna try and keep that in mind and be pretty basic in my descriptions. So hopefully everybody will be able to get something out of it. So today I'd like to revisit, or I should say revisit food items, but visit easy, no cook breakfast choices for the trail. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Today, I'd like to discuss no cook, easy breakfast choices. And this is something that I generally do when I go backpacking. If you're going camping, generally you're gonna be a little bit more involved in the food making because you're staying in one place. Usually it's not as uh, important to get up and go to do stuff unless it's you're packing up to go home. On those days, you might do something like we're doing here today and if you're day hiking, generally you're gonna probably eat breakfast either before you hit the trail or on the way to the trail or after you've done your day hike. So it's usually not a concern for a day hike. And most people when they're doing day hikes don't carry a stove, so that wouldn't be an option anyway. What I'm gonna to cover today are things that you can do when you're hiking or backpacking in specific that will get you to save some time and also some energy. There's also a big movement to go stoveless. And stoveless, for those that don't know, is exactly what it sounds like. You go without a stove. And there's a large portion of people that are going stoveless or not taking a stove, so therefore they don't cook at all any of their meals. Uh, I'm not that extreme, but what I usually do myself when I go backpacking is I'm pretty much stoveless except for dinner. So I do carry a stove and I generally cook my dinner because that's the one meal I really like to have a nice warm meal, especially if it's the colder months. But I like that warm food idea. It replenishes me, it reinvigorates me, and it makes the day seem not so bad. But for breakfast and lunch, I generally don't wanna uh, either take the time out to cook it and then do the cleaning that comes with it as well. So I usually wanna get hiking in the morning and get some miles done. So stopping or taking time to cook breakfast would take away from that. I feel better getting the Milo's on. So I have some stuff uh, uh, over on my right on a little table. So I'm gonna be looking over and reaching for it every once in a while. So you might see me doing that and just realize I'm just grabbing some items so I could bring them here and present them to you. The first thing I'm gonna take and the most easiest of choices are some of the most common ones you'll see and probably you may even do in your life outside the trail, which is doing things like Pop-Tarts, very, very popular with through hikers and other people, you can buy all different ones. This is a name brand uh, made by Kellogg, Pop-Tarts. They're good in that they come in different sizes. You can buy large or small, open up the box and then break them down. You'll notice there's a lot of empty space in the box. You would never wanna take this if you were going backpacking. You would take just what you need. I could open up the box, you know, buy a, this is eight and they come in packs of two already pre-wrapped. So there's two in here. So when they say eight, you actually have four individual servings. A serving is considered two pastries, as they call them, which is two Pop-Tarts. And they're pre-wrapped and packaged, so they're pretty easy and portable to go on the trail. They're pretty durable, they'll hold up a little bit. They might get a little crushed and everything, but everything will still be in the bag and you can eat it. Uh, be careful with choosing uh, chocolate varieties, especially during the summer months, because they will get melted inside the pack. When you open up, you'll have a mess. But uh, you can figure out a way to lick it off and still eat it. So you can choose all different varieties. So you can buy 
uh, a different flavor for every day if you really want to. These also make good snacks, which I'll be covering in hopefully another episode. But Pop-Tarts are very popular and very convenient. You can also find off-brands for even cheaper. Even the dollar store will have these. So you, it makes it a cheap, easy supply option for breakfast. And they supply a fair amount of energy, 370 calories for this one. This is uh, the frosted strawberry. The other ones might be a little bit off, but generally they're around the same amount of calories for a serving. Remember, that's two pastries. So you can eat half now and half later. You don't have to eat them both at the same time. And I would take these with me. And these are easy go-to choice for a lot of hikers. And I see these out there a lot. Just make sure you throw away the wrapper and pack it out. Another choice that's very, very popular is the numerous types of protein bars or breakfast bars out there. And there's so many, I can't possibly, you know, name them all. There's all different ones. And especially if you're into certain diets, if you're doing like no sugar or you like organic or all natural or less ingredients, you know, they have all of them. Uh, obviously, uh, Cliff Bars are very popular. There are all different ones and depending on what you like. So this one is peanut butter. Uh, this is an option right here about these uh, dollar store. Uh, you get five of these. They're uh, biscuits with honey and peanut butter. So good breakfast. Uh, not easy. There's not hard to do. Just pick them up. However, they're only 125 calories a bar. So you might end up eating two of these or three of these even. Realize that when you're choosing a food choice and what you're going to take with you, also not only the cost of the item, because just because something costs less doesn't mean it's always better because you may need to eat more to get the same calories. So for instance, comparing this biscuit, which is 125 calories per cookie or sandwich, and you get five in the box, compared to the Pop-Tarts, which are 370, and I'll make it easy, I'll do easy math. So it's basically, I have to eat three of these cookies to make up one package of Pop-Tarts. Because even though this is a cheaper buy, you got to carry more of them to make up one of these. So something to choose by. Something to consider and take into account when you're doing your meal prep. But ideally, if it's food you like and you want to eat it, then buy it. You know, money shouldn't be that much of an object. They're not that expensive that you can't afford to buy the food you like. And it's going to keep you interested in eating so that you eat your food and you enjoy it. Because food is very important. It's psychologically very important as well as physically for you to take in good calories. So I think sometimes it's worth spending a little money to get good food. As I said, there's also different types of bars. So for instance, you have uh, protein bars and there are all different ones. You know, there's Cliff bars, there's meal replacement, Kellogg's makes bars, every major manufacturer makes bars. Here's Quaker, they have theirs all different kind, whatever you like. If you like chocolate chip, if you like granola, honey, peanut butter, um, this fruit stuff, there's something for everyone out there. You'll find something that you can do. This is another bar. It's, you know, not bad. It's small compared to some of the other bars, but it'll do the trick. It's easy and portable. Uh, what I like about most of these things, they're already pre-wrapped in individual sizes. These are pure protein. I buy these a lot at Walmart. Um, they're good because they're low in sugar. Good in pro high in protein and high in calories, uh, just low in carbs uh, comparatively to other stuff. Uh, and they have sugar alcohol. So if you're someone that gets upset by sugar alcohols, then you might not want to have these. So other than that, they're prepackaged, they're convenient. What I like about all these types of things, like these bars and the breakfast bars, are their size is very small. These fit, these fit very well in my hip uh, pouches or pockets or my hip belt pockets so that I can carry them during the day and eat them whenever I want as a snack or for breakfast. They don't take up a lot of room. They provide good cal uh, calories for their size and their weight. And they don't take up a lot of room in either your backpack and your food bag or in my hip pocket when I'm hiking. So very good choice. And I usually almost always will have some of these even as a backup, maybe if I decide I don't want to make something else, I'll go to this. So those are good choices to have. So, and there's obviously tons of different protein or sports bars, and you can go on and on with those, the Omega bars, the metrics bars, all those things are, are choices that you can make. And there's just really too many Lara bars. There's just so many that we can't even cover them here. Uh, obviously you always have a choice if you really choose to, and like I said, you eat what you want because you're the one eating it. Uh, candy bars are always an option as well. 
a Snickers bars. This is like I always say, this is like currency on the trail. People love these. I always eat them when I hike. Usually I usually take it one or two if I can. Uh, very rarely will I not have at least one of these with me when I hike. They give a good balance of, you know, calories and sugar and fat. You got everything you need in here. So, um, and they have some salt in there. So pretty good. A regular bar is 250. They sell the king ones, which are larger. But, you know, this is just like a breakfast bar. You can buy one of these. And you can find a lot of these things at the dollar store or buy stuff on sale, see what's going good, what you like. A lot of times you can find, find specials and you can reduce your cost that way. If I'm gonna buy something anyway, I might as well buy something that's cost effective for me. But if I really want a real Snickers bar and I don't want one of these knockoff brands, then I'll spend the money on the Snickers bar. It's worth it to me. Uh, your mileage may vary. Another option is cereal. Certain cereals go very well without milk. Just dropped something. I'll pick it up later. This is uh, Cheerios. Now, this container I would not take on the trail because it just is too bulky, and I'm not going to be adding milk to it. I would have it without milk. But Cheerios lend themselves very, very easily to food on the trail. They're portable. They're easy to eat. They're, you can eat them by the handful. There's a lot of other cereals like that that you can just pick up, you know, like a, like a Chex Mix or something like that that you can just eat as you walk or even in a bag. And that brings me to my next point. Um, you know, buying something like this or even the small sizes, if you remember these come in multi-packs in boxes, are costly. But you can buy either actual Cheerios or even the knockoff, the generic Cheerios, in a big bag and then break them down. And that is another way to me that you reduce your cost. So all you need is, if you want to be really uh, scientific about it or a particular, you can get a scale and weigh out a portion. So for something like Cheerios, I can buy a big box like this, open it up, and break it down into smaller servings. So a regular size serving for an adult might be, they say 39 grams, which is a cup and a half. I can measure out a cup and a half using a measuring cup, or I can use a, a kitchen scale, which you should have one if you wanna weigh your gear. It, it always pays to have a small scale to measure stuff. And I like to get Ziploc bags. These are snack sizes, they're really small. So I can load up with my snack or in this case, my meal. So let's say I decided, now that's only 140 calories. So I, let's say I'm looking for something in the 300 calorie range. I might go double that and I might put in, you know, 78 grams or 80 grams. So that's, a, so that's basically two and a half cups. You know, or I might go even longer because I'm hiking long and I'm burning a lot of calories. I might put in three cups. If you're measuring it out and you want to be particular so you know exactly how many calories you're getting, then obviously you want to measure it away. If you're just doing it by eye, you might just take a bag like this and fill it up with what you think you want to eat and you're good to go. And if you don't eat it, you zip it up and you eat it later or you can eat it as you walk or hike or whatever, but your choice. But Ziploc bags are your friend. Many of the item choices that I'm gonna say here are something that you should probably consider buying in bulk, especially if you're going for a multi-day hike or you're gonna be doing hiking often or you have other people going with you. They may be interested in food as well and you can discuss that, but I like to buy big and break it down. And I do that with a lot of my meals because it's cheaper it lowers the cost. Not that these things are so expensive, but it does get expensive. You know, if you buy a box of bars, generally they're cheaper than if you buy them individually. The benefit of buying them individually is you can pick different flavors you want and the type of bars you want. So you might want to go into like a GNC or a Walmart and buy bars individually and get eight different protein bars. Or if you like what you're getting, just buy a box of them and they'll generally be a little bit cheaper. But um, so that's cereal with no milk. It's dry. You can just eat it whenever. They make several uh, brands of granola or granola clusters. Uh, they usually some sort of fruit, the granola, and usually like a, a nut with them, usually almonds mixed in and into little clusters. And those are very good, excellent choices as well. They're uh, good food. They're easy to eat and they pack down small. You can break up a bag into smaller packages, once again, into small Ziploc bags. Another choice I like to take with me is trail mix, and it makes a good breakfast as, a, as just, a, it's not just a snack, it can be your breakfast as well. So one of the things I like to do is to buy these little trail mixes. I buy these at Walmart, this is their brand. Uh, this is the Mountain Trail Mix. What I like about it is it has a mixture of peanuts, almonds, raisins, and chocolate, M&Ms. And with the candy coating, they generally hold up to the heat. I've taken these out in the summer and they don't get to be a big mess inside the bag. If not, they're individually wrapped. This serving size is a little larger than what you would get if you bought a big bag and what they recommend. So, but I like these, these are 
they're prepackaged. Um, 240 calories for 50 grams or 1.75 ounces of the food. And I would generally bring one or two of these for each day. And I can eat these uh, as I go along. Prepackaged, good to go. They do come in a larger pouch, I think 12 or 18, 16, something like that. I bought this one just for demonstration purposes because I have no hikes planned and they generally won't last in my house anyway. Uh, my children will, if I leave these out, my children will eat all my trail food. So I have to either secure them somewhere safe where they can't get to it or buy it right before I go and pack. So that's an option. What I usually end up doing though, if I don't want to buy those, I actually do buy those for convenience, uh, is I will buy a big bag like this and once again, open it up, break it down and stick it into the Ziploc bags to make individual servings, which is actually cheaper because this costs me less. The only thing you have is the expense of the bag. The bags can be reused more than once if they don't get real uh, messy on the trail. But I also use my one of my Ziploc bags, usually a large one, for a trash bag. So I may have some food in there and then that f food bag becomes my trash bag as I hike along. So once again, buying big, breaking it down saves you money. It's your time or your money. Uh, nuts and raisins are always an option. I like buying big bags of raisins because I can break them down, just like I was talking about the trail mix or the cereal. I don't like the boxes of raisins because I feel like they're not sealed. Uh, dirt or bugs can get in them or water can get in them. So I like having a bag. So even if I buy the boxes, I would repackage them in a Ziploc bag anyway, leaving them in a package. But this is easier. I have less cleanup that way. I just have to divide them up. So once again, something to do. You can also use individual nuts. Uh, here's a thing of cashews. You can divide these up. Uh, I really like macadamia nuts. They actually are one of the um, highest calories, I think, per ounce of most nuts. Uh, they're in the 200 range per ounce, 200 calories per ounce. So that makes them, uh, I think, one of the nuts with the highest caloric per ounce um, output. So if you're looking to carry calorie-dense food, macadamia should be on your horizon there. Uh, and, and almonds are always a good choice as well. Oh, so, but another thing you can do is you can take these and you can make your own kind of trail mix with it, right? So I can mix, I blend them nuts together. I can mix more than two or three, so I can make my own trail mix that way, just by mixing it in a big bowl or in a big bag and shaking it up and carrying it with me in a big bag. Or once again, dividing into individual portions based on how long I'm going. And I can even add the raisins in with that. And I got trail mix and I can buy a bag of M&Ms and make my own trail mix with that. Or I can use chocolate chips. Uh, I like using M&Ms because they have that candy coating, which gives it a little more flavor, but it also protects the chocolate in hot weather. If you're going to be going in colder weather, then you might want to just buy like chocolate chips. Uh, you can buy those in the baking aisle and they're cheaper than buying, let's say, M&Ms. But if I'm going to go in the hotter weather, I generally like the candy coating. They seem to hold up unless they're really packed and hard. They don't usually crush up and they still don't get the bag all messy with melted chocolate all over it. So just something to think about. And what's good about that is you can control the mix as much as you want. If you really like, let's say, pecans, you can add a lot of pecans. If you really want more chocolate than you want nuts, you add more chocolate. So you custom make it for what you like. And that's always a good option. Another thing that can be done is just like on the, uh, when you go to the gym or during the week, you can use powders. The only thing is you have to mix them with water. And I'm assuming you're going to have water anyway, because usually you need water anyway for yourself and you're going to have access to it at some point. So you can use and mix water with a powder to make a meal replacement. And there are some other choices as well. Uh, if you look, there's things like Nido or Nestum. That's like an oatmeal for babies. It's a fine powder. All you do is add water, whip it up. They got rice that are beech nut makes them for babies. You can mix it up and you have food. All it does is you have a bowl now or something that you have to clean up, but you can mix it up very, very easily just with a spoon and water. It mixes instantaneously, really. You don't have to let it sit and wait and uh, you know soften up. You can eat it almost right away and it is pretty tasty. And you can always use that as a palate to add other things once again. You can go to a good standby, which is, you know, raisin, dates, things like that, that you can add to it to add more flavor, um, cranberries, dried fruit, or you can even add nuts to it and give it more punch in terms of calories and flavor. And this, you're just limited by your imagination, whatever you want to do. Another thing that you can do is use actual protein powders. So 
um, you know, you can choose to do an actual protein powder. And this is an individual packet. It's kind of big for an individual packet, but this would be to make like a smoothie or a mix. You could do this for a mix. You can actually bring your blender bottle with you. However, then you got to clean it. Uh, I tend not to do that. If you can get it to go into a regular water bottle sometimes, if it's uh, thin enough, it's not real thick mixture, you can usually do that. And once again, you can buy big, right? Take your handy dandy kitchen scale. This is the one I use and weigh out a portion, pack it in a bag and take it with you. One of the things you can do to get it to go into a regular water bottle is snip the corner off or bite the corner or cut the corner with your knife and use that as a funnel to go into the, the bottle, the water bottle through the neck and just shake it up and drink it out of the water bottle. You'll have a little residual uh, flavor in there for when you fill it up again. But if it's something you like anyway, then you're probably not gonna mind that. It'll make the water taste a little like chocolate or vanilla or mint or whatever you choose because there's so many flavors available with all these things. These come in all different flavors and you know, even if you're interested in a certain type of diet or a dietary um, restriction you have or you, you know, you're looking for low sugar or you eat paleo or keto, you can probably find some sort of mix that meets your caloric or, or dietary goals. So that's always an option. Uh, one of the things I used to do when I was going to the gym and I used to work out, I used to carry these things. Uh, they're called the, I think they're Nutri Nutribombs. Um, the problem is they're a little bulky to pack, but basically what it is, it's a funnel with a cap on it on both ends. So I could preload this with my powder and seal it and take this hiking with me. The only problem is it's kind of bulky, but the good thing is I can use this like a funnel. The bottom screws off. This would go in the neck of the water and I would tap the powder, it falls in. And now I, all I have to do is shake the bottle and I have my sports drink to drink. The good thing is you can just bring one of these. You can forget about the cap if you want to just use it like a funnel. Or if you store the powder in here, the only thing is you only have one use out of it unless you're separating it. So, but you could bring more powder in Ziploc bags and bring one of these along. And now you're able to make your breakfast drink all throughout your trip. So once again, just something to think about. Um, and I already mentioned, you know, all, all these play carnation, quick, all make protein drinks or drinks you can use, meal replacement for breakfast, for kids or for adults to use. And you can just simply use that powder, you know, or milk chocolate or quick, like I said. But there are some others that are uh, like a rice or an oatmeal that are, and Nido is one of them. And I've used that sometimes when I'm making pasta instead of milk. I don't take milk on the trail. Obviously, it would spoil, so I take like a powdered milk, and sometimes I'll add one of those, like a Nido, which has calories in itself. It could become like a shake. So it has flavoring, and it also gives me calories. So it ups the calories that I'm getting by adding that to a meal.